How's it going, guys? It is 2.29 a.m., the 8th of November, Tuesday, 2022, here in Japan. We have a passable question for step one and two. Uh, this stuff all over the NBME exams, no fucking excuses. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. The link's down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. And I start the clip. So 51-year-old woman, three-month history, worsening shortness of breath and exertion. Physical exam shows bibasilar crackles and pedal edema. Drug living is pulsations, five centimeters above the sternal angle. Echo shows an ejection fraction of 35%. Question just simply wants to know the next best step in pharmacologic therapy. So uh, the shortness of breath on exertion with bibasilar crackles reflects left heart decompensation. Okay, so if your left heart fails, it's going to back up into the pulmonary circulation, increase pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, increase pulmonary capillary hydrostatic pressure with transudation from the pulmonary venules and capillaries into the alveolar spaces. So if we have right heart failure findings, which would be our jugular venous distension here and our pedal edema, if you can't feel the right heart, it's going to back up in the venous circulation. Now where students can get tripped up is in questions, they can say jugular venous pulsations are three centimeters above the sternal angle. That's normal. Okay, so three centimeters is normal. Here it's elevated. Okay, so ejection fraction, 35%. Normal range is 55 to 70. So we have systolic dysfunction, presumably. If we have diastolic dysfunction, we have preserved ejection fraction. So left heart failure plus right heart failure equals congestive heart failure, which is what we have here. Okay, so what's the next best step in pharmacologic therapy? So let's just whip through the answer choices here. Choice A, antagonism and beta receptors, wrong fucking answer. So this is important value to communicate because students often erroneously think that beta blockers are first line for heart failure and they're not. Okay, so this is on the NBME, as I just fucking said. So yes. Beta blockers have utility in heart failure, but they're not first line. All right, so you say, well, what is first line for heart failure? All right, well, how about I continue with the fucking question? How's that sound? Choice B, antagonism of enzyme cleavage, a very ambiguous type of answer choice here, refers to ACE inhibitor, is our correct answer. Now, you need to know, and I talk about this in my FAR modules on my site, which I'll link below, and also on my Anki cards, that ACE inhibitor or an R, angiotensin II receptor blocker, those are first line for heart failure, okay? Very important you know that. So we have ACE inhibitor ARB first. If insufficient, we add beta blocker, okay? And then after the beta blocker, we make sure the patient is uvolemic. So if the patient has very bad peripheral edema or low oxygen sats, very bad pulmonary edema, we can give furosemide, loop diuretic, doesn't decrease mortality, but we like to give it after the beta blocker, typically. It's a long fucking discussion. I don't want to make this an extended clip, but ACE inhibitor, ARB first, then we add a beta blocker, furosemide oftentimes. Then we can add spironolactone, uh, aldosterone receptor antagonist. Then, if insufficient, we can add the combination of hydralazine and nitrates. The combination decreases mortality. If insufficient, we can add digoxin. Okay, it doesn't decrease mortality. And then ultimately implantable devices. So ACE inhibitor ARB first. And it makes sense because if we have reduced ejection fraction, the kidney is going to be experiencing reduced perfusion. So the kidney interprets that as though blood volume is low. So RAS will increase and angiotensin 2, aldosterone is increased, but angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor on peripheral arterioles. So we have increased afterload. So if we antagonize that and we attenuate that peripheral vasoconstriction, we decrease afterload, we improve the heart's ability to pump, we increase the ejection fraction. Okay, there's still first line, even for diastolic dysfunction, we have maintained ejection fraction, but you need to know, ACE inhibitors are ARBs first and beta blockers. Choice C, enhancement of CGMP production, wrong fucking answer, this refers to nitrates. Okay, very important. So nitrates, first line for angina pectoris. So nitrates, activate guanylyl cyclase, increase CGMP production, okay? And that leads to the uh, dilation of the peripheral veins, decreases preload on the right heart, decreases myocardial oxygen demand, uh, relieves the myocardial pain, okay? Wrong fucking answer. Choice D inhibition of calcium channels, wrong answer. So, I mean, this could refer to dihydropyridines like nifedipine and lodipine, which act on arteries where it could refer to non-dihydropyridines, okay, verapamil, dotiazem. A lot we can talk about. Amlodipine, nifedipine, you should be aware, cause peripheral edema. Verapamil causes constipation. Uh, dotiazem, only detail you need to know is that it's used for unstable angina. It's on one of the uh, new 2CK NBMEs. Verapamil can be used for 
atrial fibrillation if for rate control if a patient has contraindication of beta blockers, nafedipine and lodipine uh, used for hypertension. This is more medicine 301 used for, hyper, for family medicine, uh, uh, used for hypertension if a patient does not have prediabetes, diabetes, or any atherosclerotic disease. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C inhibition of phosphodiesterase, wrong answer, but very broad term, okay? And we talk about this cardiovascular stuff, could refer to celostazole, dipyridamol. Celostazole is the first pharmacologic agent we would use in theory for intermittent claudication slash peripheral vascular disease. I say in theory because it's almost always the wrong fucking answer on USMLA. For 2CK surgery IM, you need to know that the patient has an decreased ankle brachial indices. ABI is a first line uh, for diagnosis for uh, peripheral arterial disease. If the ABIs are low, the next best step is recommend a walking program. Okay, so you're going to do stress tests first if it's listed. 50% of the time it won't be listed. We go straight to recommend a walking slash exercise program. Students will sometimes choose celostazole. It's the wrong fucking answer, okay? The patient's already been on a walking program with limited efficacy. Then a patient could receive celostazole. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.